Good day all, I Rapstein of Linden Associates with your financial market wrap up for this Thursday and this is August 20th, 2020 at 5.15 p.m. Central Time. I haven't been on time for about a week and a half. I wanna get back to that schedule. I have a favor before I do anything. I have a large following on this, but it's not big enough. I'd like you to tell your friends about it. I know that if I don't put out a video, you go, where is he? What's going on? I see it. I see what you write and I appreciate it. But it's not so hard for me to ask you to help me out, right? I'm putting a lot of effort into these. Tell your friends, send out an email, show them the channel that it is. That's all. They'll eventually want the free offerings. They may subscribe to the services. That's what keeps this going. If I don't keep it going, you won't get me. I'll just stay with my paid subscriber services. Help me to help you and keep this going. Pretty simple. All right, so where are we? Well, today was certainly a whipsaw day. I got whipsawed. I didn't think that the S&P was gonna come back the way that it did. I don't mind telling you that. When the market was down and getting under the 3350 uh, area, I didn't think it was gonna come back. It not only came back, you went up for new highs in the NASDAQ, you're mo moving on those highs in the S&P. This market is simply powerful. It's already shook off whatever the FOMC minutes got into this market. I, my friend Rick Santelli over uh, on CNBC, and Rick and I know each other for many, many years. And I can't wait to get back on the floor so we actually talk, so that'll come soon enough. But he, he summed it up today well. I saw his show early in the morning and he said, you know, you don't need the Fed to say they're gonna do yield controls, curve yield controls. They're doing it by their action. And by not creating a policy for it, they're better off. Brilliant, right call. They bought in March, April, what, 150 or 100, let me get this right, about a trillion dollars worth of things. 150 billion, I think, in the May or June period, 80 billion a month right now, and they can buy with the way that they've set it up any part of this curve yield that they want. They're controlling it without doing that. That is a great thing. As for inflation, it's simply not here. And, and I wouldn't worry about it until it gets going. In order for it to get going, the economy has to show that it's got stable legs. Seeing today the unemployment uh, or the employment claims, that's the right number, the employment claims go up another hundred and some odd thousand, that is not what you want to see. That was the opposite of it because it's going to attract that the Fed's got to get more done. The airlines, they're challenging the market right now. What are they saying? Americans the first one. I can't believe you're not seeing it from others. Americans smartly said come October 7th, Think of the day. They stop receiving money for this program October 1st. On October 7th, we're going to stop flying to 15 regional airports. How do you think the senators and congressmen in those states are going to feel if Americans the only one servicing it? In many cases, that's it, that airport. What if United or Delta join in? Game is over. So are they going to get that $25 billion? Are they gonna pass a plan in Congress? These are ways to get it. Lyft was the other event of the day, as you saw, they got a stay in court. I didn't say a reversal, a stay in court on the uh, ruling that went against them. We'll see what happens during this period, but they had smartly said, we're out of California. At midnight tonight, there are no more Lyft drivers. I don't, I'm surprised Uber didn't join in. You wanna bring California's laws to its knees? Make these people, all that depend on it, call on the phone and tell people, California got some great ideas, this isn't one of them. But we'll see what goes on. But as I said, the marketplace, you can see what it's doing. All right, let's go to the chart action. On the S&P, you're up 24 points for the week, and this is certainly the highest, if we were to close here, a new high close on just a close only chart. It's not even blinking. Guys like me got shook out today. This break broke the swing line, broke under that number. It did not lose the embedded reading. That was the key. That overrides this. I know that I was a wise guy saying, I don't want to turn a profit into a loss if, uh, for, the, for the recommendations I had for my clients. It's one of those trades I was ahead on, okay? And I know you're going to pick on me and go, though, there's a lot you're not. Lower low, higher high sideways action, okay.
but you'll see what I'm getting at. All you did is make a run for this number, but did you hit it? No. Number two, you broke the pattern of higher highs, higher lows. The resistance in the market is now the 3427 level. You can see the upper Bollinger Band and this stayed. It didn't even blink. And when I saw that, do you ever know that you got caught? I woke up this morning and I do sleep every now and then and I saw what the market had done, how it had dropped down and reversed itself and I went, I'm caught. But smart enough to realize maybe there's a play in a currency or two you can make to make some of that back and then figure a way to get back in. Because if this is good, is the dollar really going to keep rallying? That's one of the things I asked myself. We'll get to that in a second here. In the NASDAQ, higher lows, higher highs, embedded reading, you're off to the races. Until you lose these readings, I don't even want to hear about that this market isn't uh, staying bullish. It is. Lose those readings and then I'll take your calls on it. You're flirting, as you can see, with losing that reading in the Dow on the reopening. I don't think you need to be a hero in the Dow. In the Dow Jones, if we look at today's reading, it held it at the close, but you're losing it even though the market is sitting here up nearly 50 points tonight. So what is one of the weak indices? This is one of them. For me, I'd be telling traders, okay, it hasn't lost it, but it's flirting with it. Be very careful. You might want to own the stronger, not the weaker ones. Same thing in the Russell. I am not married to this market at all. This is the market that, as you know, I think is the weakest of the indices. Wouldn't surprise me if it gets back to the 18-day average. So I like two of the indices. I'm not enamored with the other two. In the VIX cash, you got up today, and I was laughing where it got. The market got up to 21.17. Remember the other day I told you I thought the pros wrote puts at 21.10. I thought that a group of them probably got out because you didn't get a bounce the way you normally do. Today, if they were in, I, I've been in this position as a trader for over 50 years. And uh, when people will ask me, and they will, they say, I'm short here, what do I do? And you get a chart, I say, if you can get daylight and break even, just scratch, it's called a scratch. Just get out where you owned it. I think a number of traders did. That, that's all I can say with it. We'll see in the next setup. In the bond market, we have a higher high, lower low, a bounce today, uh, oversold condition. I don't see a trend in any manner on this chart. I am seeing the same identical thing in the 10 year. I see a pattern of equal highs here. One four, what was it? I think there were 140.13 or something like that. Let me just check it. I'm going from memory. I, pretty good one. 140.13 there, 140.13 there. So I've got double top, the market comes down, hits the lower Bollinger Band, gives you a bounce as you can see. Wouldn't be surprised if you get to the 18 day average, but it's not a trend. It's just meandering back and forth. As I said in the dollar index, I looked at this market hard today and I looked hard enough for my traders to throw out a special update. I, I don't do these every day by any stretch of the imagination. And I said, I think the market's going to fail against that number, the 18-day average, and don't even wait for that. And I gave them some instructions. I don't tell you here what I tell them. They pay for it. But I can tell you after the fact, that's what we did. And now the question is, will the market be able to get back down here? Or am I going to be proven wrong? I have them with a stop order as well. In the euro currency, all you did is pull back to the 18-day average here. But in this market, if we look, today's low in the market was 118.07 and a half. What was the break low here? If we look at it, it was 117.88 and a half, then up over by the way, hit the Bollinger Band, pros come out typically, and now the market trying to hold right here. It did its job. And with tonight's action, the question is, will the swing line move up? I don't know. We'll find out, but the market is up tonight. In the Japanese yen, I was just analyzing this for myself, and I came to the conclusion I have no idea what this chart is doing. I've been saying that most of the week to you, but I spent probably a good five, ten minutes on the chart looking at it, looking at the weeklies, trying to get a feel. I don't have it. You got a lower and low, higher high. You just keep playing around this 18-day average. Let it go. Bitcoin. The break held the 18-day average. Now, you had lost the embedded reading back here. You fell, hit the 18-day average. That was the objective. Now, 
momentum is still down, bias is up, and you're entering one of these potential sideways action events. Not quite a pipe, it's certainly not narrow enough for me to call it there. It's a thousand dollar range, so why would I call it that? But it is getting more sideways action. Probably because the gold market has lost some of its luster recently. In the October Brent and WTI, well, we got down, as you know, into that 215 area. We're just sort of sitting here at 216 right now. If we take a look at crude, have I not been crystal clear? I don't want you to trade the sideways action. If I haven't been, go back and look at the videos. I've been clear. I said I think you're going to get chopped up in that sideways action, and I said the same thing here. The market that's got me a little more interested is the gasoline market because it's pushing on the upper Bollinger Band and it has an embedded reading. If we come back to these, it's not embedded, not embedded. So I get excited when I see embedded even though it's coming out and it's coming out of a pipe. You can see this and if you haven't seen it, let me point it out. Do you not disagree? Look at how sideways that is. Then the market starts working its way. It's very subtle, but it's picking up its momentum as you can see. Okay. Until you lose that embedded reading, I'm in the bull camp. What about Nat Gas? Well, it's had a big run. Be careful here. You're flirting with starting to lose that embedded reading. And that doesn't mean that you've lost it, but you're flirting. If you do, a correction can set in at any point. Hot weather is on the way across the country. Midwest here, we're going to boil. And I mean, boy, we're going to be up in the high 90s again. Uh, is this the last hurrah of August? I don't know, but it's hot. And it's coming in a big way. So, you know, if when you look at the weather, you can't look at today's weather. you got to look at the next 10-day forecast to get an idea. And if you haven't tried my advisory services, any of my subscriber videos, are you aware we offer a two-week trial to them? So if you haven't, this is a great time to do it. I see somebody writing me on the YouTube, do you offer a free offer? I offer it all the time, but let me say it. We offer a free trial once. I think you either see it's good for you or it's not good for you. This is something in our futures trading kit. If you don't have it, you want the kit for, I think. I've laid out the major typical chart patterns to give you an idea of what they look like when you hear traders talk about them or me talk about them. This is part of many parts that we have. We have booklets on technical analysis in here explaining the concept. There's something you probably don't have and that is the uh, cause and effect sheet on money supply. And money supply is going to become a very important element. I wrote this years ago. It's as good today as the night that I wrote it. It has to do with M1, M2, and M3, which are the velocity of different types of money going through the economy and what it means. This is going to become important. The Fed is already, everybody yesterday was saying, oh, is the Fed getting ready to look at inflation? They're not, in my opinion. Instead, what the Fed's doing is, I think yesterday, they backed off from yield controls in a nice way, and they said they'll just keep on buying in the marketplace to control what that's doing. Much brighter. Why put on yield controls? Why put a new policy in place? I think the market understood that better today. But this explains the velocity of money, what it does, and the inflation impact when it kicks in. Pivot points, the Arun indicator, this is all in here. Trials to our charting software. If you haven't tried it and you want to play with the swing line, it's right there in our charting software. Education. This is the CME Group's education site. They've come up with a new course on options. So you might want to take that course. That is free. I think it's something, you know, learning is always the best thing you can do so that you have an idea of what other people are talking about, maybe yourself. So take a look at all this. Go to our website, sign up for the free offers, and take advantage of that free offering to my videos, to my written research. I think you'll find it interesting. It's a two-week trial. We won't keep it going much longer than that, believe me. I'm Ira. You have a good day. I'll talk to you all tomorrow.